sometimes you're gonna get some really bad data like this or like this or like this and you're going to wonder how the heck am I going to solve this even though I have Power Query? Well, in this video, I'm going to talk about some very interesting unpivoting tricks to solve such messy data sets. Stick around, you're going to have a lot of fun. Let's go. All right, example number one, please take a look at the messy transposed like data that I'm working with. It's like a transpose problem. Take a look. So I have six columns right here. So we have column one all the way up till column number six. And we have sets of three you know, uh, rows that represent the data. So the first set of three rows that represent the data are sales rep, which is the column header, value and the date. And these are all the sales rep running into columns, all the values running into columns and all the dates then running into columns. The first question that you ask yourself when you take a look at these data sets that who the hell prepares the data like this? Well, there are plenty of people in the world and that's the reason why we have Power Query. Nevertheless, let's move on. So the next set is the same set, although the numbers are a bit different, but hey, it doesn't matter, you understand the data. And then we have the three rows again right here. Now what I'd like to be able to do with this is kind of transpose and unpivot the data. So here is what I'm trying to do. I want to capture all of these three headers at the moment and transfer it like that. So we have sales rep, value and the date. The same headers, they don't change, so that's good. And then all of these values are somehow like transposed and converted into rows and they come up like this. And the next set come up, comes below that and the next set actually comes below that. How do we do such a transformation in Power Query? It's ridiculously simple using the M language. Let's load this data and fire up some Power Query. All right, in Power Query, the data has been loaded. Let's just take it from there and let's just start to solve the problem. Now, I'm gonna try to explain you the logic as well so that in case you have something similar, not exactly the same, you can apply bits and pieces of the solution and apply to your own problems as well. Take a look. So. What I'd like to do is I'd like to be able to break the table into like rows of three. So the first three rows, they get separated. The next three rows, they get separated. And the next three rows, they get separated. It's very essential for me to treat these three tables differently and then kind of work with these tables to bring the data into a certain shape. But the first step is to kind of break the table into sets of three rows. That I can do using a function called table.split. So I can use something like table.split source happens to be the previous step and that is also a table and I can say that I'd like to split at three rows and I'm just going to close the bracket and press enter this is going to give me how many tables there are nine rows and three row per table that's going to give me three tables and that's my first table that's my second table and that's my third table now if you think about the kind of work that I would want to do from here on is something like this I'd like to consider this as one column of data this as the second column of the data and this as the third column of the data. At the moment, these are rows, but I'd like to consider them as the column of the data. Now, uh, what we're going to do is, uh, we're not going to transpose the table as of yet. What we're going to do is we're going to perhaps uh, convert the first row into a list, the second row into a list and the third row into a list. And once we have the list, we'll kind of convert it into a table. So you'll see once we do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to use a function called list.transform on top of the function that I've already written. And I'm going to say that, hey, I'm trying to work with this list. This list is produced by this formula right here. And in this list, for every single table there is, I would like to convert the rows into a list as well. So I can write something like, hey, go inside every single table. And for every single table, please convert the rows into a list. So table dot two rows is the function that picks up the rows of the table and converts that into a list. If I just commit to on this particular formula, you're going to see that sure enough, we do have a list. And now earlier, this was a table and now we had uh, three rows right here and every single row has been converted into a list. If you don't trust me, you can actually click on this particular list, which opens up the nested list and you can take a look. Now sales rep has become vertical. That is nothing but the first list, the second list and the third list. And I'm going to get rid of this step uh, and get back to my original table. Now from here on, what I could do is I can actually use these three lists, lists to actually create a table. So if you recall, what we just saw was this first list is nothing but sales rep. The second list is nothing but value. And the third list is nothing but date. That's what I believe it to be. But now these lists are like that and I can pack these three lists to make a single table. Now what I can use is a function called table dot two columns. So I already have the three lists and using these three lists I would like to make a table. So I can use a function uh, called table dot two columns and that 
is going to sorry table dot from columns not two columns so table dot from columns function is going to take these lists three lists and every single lists become a column of the table and what we're going to get back is a table but now now the difference is that the rows have actually become the columns of the table and that's the beauty about these two functions now the only thing left is to just to promote the first row as the headers push push it up to the headers right here and then I can just go ahead and combine the table. So what am I going to do? I am going to use the function table dot promote headers and wrap that in the function that I have been working with. Press enter. This obviously promotes the header. You can take a look. The headers are promoted. Now what we have is a list of three tables and I can just combine the data from the three tables and that's about it. Now what we can do is we have a list and the list has three tables and I can use the table dot combine function. So table dot combine start the bracket close the bracket towards in the end and that is pretty much it and this is the data that we started with which looked like this using some manipulations with the M language we have gotten to the data like this this is pure magic if you're enjoying this video so far you're absolutely going to love my M course in Power Query this is where I talk about fundamentals of the M language we talk about initial starting concepts first which are the building blocks like lists records tables we lay down the foundations really well and then we move on to solve more difficult problems of data cleaning especially using the M language I've laid down the course in an extremely well structured manner which is where I try to give you the logic first try to help you build on the concept to a level understanding so that you can take those concepts and even apply those concepts on solving your own data problems hundreds of students have joined this courses and absolutely have loved it in case you're interested to take your m power query skills to the next level i will highly recommend that you take a look at the course it's going to be super awesome back to the video all right fellas i hope you're enjoying this let's raise the bar and notch up the complexity a tad bit higher and that's the data that i'm working with now it's a very weird kind of unpivot column groups kind of thing that I'm trying to do but you will understand once you take a look at the data so I have first of all get uh, I've got two headers so this is the main header company A and company B now company A has got three departments finance sales and HR and company B has got four departments so I'm not even sure that how many subheaders am I going to see am I going to see three subheaders or four subheaders so we have finance sales HR and the operations and we are taking a look at obviously pivoted data so if I have to understand the number 12 I have to look up and take a look at finance and company A and I have to take a look at the business on this left hand side so this is the column for the business the way that I would want to unpivot the data is something like this so I would want to have a a business column right here a company column right here a department column right here and the value column right here and all of this data flows in this particular direction now, there are a couple of problems that we have of course we have this column that we have it at the start we have two headers we don't even know that how many headers could there be and we don't even know how many subheaders there could be so we need to account for all of that and then build the solution let's go check out power query again all right in power query here I've obviously loaded the data and obviously I'm going to start building the logic in my head first give you an overview of how are we going to work with the solution and then probably attack the problem with some M functions so the very first thing that I'm trying to take a look at is that hey is there a way that I can probably extract the first two rows of the data because those seem to be the headers of the data that I have to actually put it together up on the top not all the headers but just the relevant headers that's one thing that I would want to do extract the first two rows of the data and try to work with the data the unpivoting is going to come later but I have to extract the first two rows of the data now the reason if you don't know unpivoting that well the reason is that you can't really just take two headers so at the moment we have the first header and the second header and you can just give it a command as unpivot other columns it's not going to work unpivot other columns only works when you have a single header not two headers now what we're going to do is we're going to write a formula as a next step and we're just going to call this as a single header and to be able to extract the first two rows i'm going to use the table dot first n function so table dot first n and I'm going to start the bracket and say hey the table that I'm trying to fetch the first two rows from is the source table and that is right here and from this table just give me the first two rows which are row number one and row number two and I'm just going to feed the number two right here and this is going to just give me the first two rows of the data of course this can be automated but for now I'm just building a working solution and you can do things beyond on top of that now if I'm working with just the first two rows of the data then the transpose operation is not going to be as costly so I'm going to transpose these two rows of the data so that these columns should actually become the rows like this and for which I can use the table dot transpose function so table dot 
transpose, start the bracket, close the bracket in the end, press enter, and this is actually transpose the data. After the data has come into rows, the most obvious thing that I can do is nothing but fill down because I could not have done fill right. There's no option like fill right. So I can use fill down, but instead of limiting fill down to column number one, I will apply to as many columns there are, and I just wanna fill them down all. All right, to fill down, I'm gonna create a new step, and I am going to write the function called table dot fill down, and uh, it's gonna ask me, hey, what table are you trying to work with? I'm trying to work with the table that is in the previous step. And what is the list of the columns? So list of the columns are all the columns in the previous step. So I'm gonna say, hey, single header happens to be the table and the column names are going to come. So table.column names are also going to come from the previous step, which is nothing but single header. And close the bracket, press enter, uh, table.column names and that should give me the right answer. And you can see that as of now, uh, the first column has been filled down. There was nothing to fill down in the second column, so that is kind of good to go. Now, at the moment, what I'd like to do is I wanna merge these columns. So I wanna concatenate the first two columns together and I wanna write, let's say company A and maybe a pipe symbol in between, and then I wanna write finance right here. Bad handwriting, but you understand. But nevertheless, that's what I would wanna do. So for which I can either use the UI or I can use the Power Query M function to be able to combine the table. You know what I'd like to do? I'd like to use the M function. So I'm gonna maybe go ahead and uh, work with the same step actually. And I'm gonna say something like table.combine columns. Now table.combine columns as the first part asks you, hey, what table are you trying to work with? So I'm trying to work with the table, which I have just created right here. Then it asks me, hey, what are your columns? Uh, that you want to combine. So the columns are also going to come from the previous table right here. And then it says, hey, how would you like to combine? Is there a combiner function? And what is going to be the name of the new column? You'll see once I input all of these inputs. So I'm just going to put in a comma and says, hey, what's the source column as a list? It's asking you for a list. So I'm going to use the table.column names function. And I'm going to reference the single header, which is the previous step and that uh, gets done with the second input of the function, then it says, hey, do you wanna have a combiner function? Now, here I can use a text.combine function or any other combiner function. So I'm gonna maybe stick with a text.combine function. So I'll say text.combine, and I have to use the each and the underscore keyword right here because I'm trying to combine every single row. So text.combine, please combine, and your delimiter is going to be a pipe symbol. And then I'm gonna say that, hey, column as a text. So after you have combined the two columns together, what would you like to call the new column? So that's going to be, let's say, called combined or merged. Let's just call this as combined, uh, close the bracket and press enter. And this is going to give me a single column, which is where I have both the columns concatenated with a pipe symbol right here. All right, with these two steps, we have done the majority of the work that was needed to be done. If you take a look at the data as of now, so if you take a look at the data, we're in the source step. We actually want the data starting with the third row onwards. All of this data is what we want. On this data, the header that we want is this particular header that we have created. Now, if you take a look at the headers, the headers are just one single row. Although they are in this particular fashion, but they are single headers that we would want. So these headers are going to come on top of this data right somewhere here. And then we'll have to just promote the headers, unpivot the data and we kind of go to go. Nevertheless, you will see. Now, from this table, as of now, we have two junk rows up on the top. So I wanna remove the junk rows before I start to place the headers on the top. So I'm gonna maybe go ahead and create a new step. And I'm gonna say, hey, start to skip the rows. So I'm gonna say table.skip and I'm gonna start the bracket. And I'm gonna say, uh, I'm trying to work with the source table, which had all the rows of the data. And I wanna skip the first two rows of the data. So once I do that, you can see that the first two rows are gone and you have the neat data in front of you. On top of this data, what we, what we want is the headers which are lying right here. And there are two ways in which we can insert the headers. The first method is that we convert this into a record and we place the record like a row right here on the zeroth position or the first position and then use the promote headers function. That's one way of doing it. Or we can just break apart the table and put the table back together and just attach the header. So I'm gonna use the second method of breaking apart the table and putting it back together. That's a fun way of doing it. So I'm gonna maybe say, hey, this column becomes a list, this column becomes a list, this column becomes a list, and this column becomes a list. And all of the columns, they just become a list. So I'm gonna maybe use a function table dot two columns 
and I can start the bracket and close the bracket in the end. And this is going to make sure that every single column becomes nothing but a list. And we have eight columns, so every single column has become a list. Now, we have broken apart the table. Let's just put the table back together. Now, while we are putting the table back together, we get the option of putting the headers because once you've converted the column into a list, you've lost the headers. Once you're putting the list back into a table, you get the option of choosing your own headers. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to say that, hey, we have multiple lists. So we can we're going to say table dot from columns. So we're going to say that, hey, here are multiple lists and we would want to use these lists to convert it into a table. But you're also going to see that once you're putting the table back from lists, you have the options of choosing column headers. Do we have column headers? Sure enough, we have column headers and they are right here. So I'm going to maybe say combined, oops, combined uh, headers. Where are you combined headers? The intelligence is not working. I'm surprised. All right. The reason why we're getting the error is that in the second part of the formula, what we need is a list. And this, the previous step is not a list at the moment. So we need to go ahead and convert this into a list format for which I can just go ahead and say something like, hey, you are a table as of now, but I just want to pull apart the combined column from this list and this should actually work. So uh, this bracket up until the end delivers me a table. If I can just maybe write the square bracket and write combined after that, this is going to give me a list. And now this list is a perfect fit for this formula that we have created. If you just take a look, the table is working. No problems whatsoever. Now, now we have the table and the headers are also perfectly all right. We can use our beloved unpivot formula. So I'm just going to click right here, right click and I'll say unpivot other columns. Now at the moment, if you take a look at the formula, the BZ, which is the column that we have used to unpivot the data is hard coded in the table. So that means that if you think about it for a quick second, this particular value, which is BZ, which is now our header could be something else as well. This could be products or values or categories or colors or whatever that might be. And this should not ideally be hard coded. Now what we're going to do is we are actually going to use a formula to be able to get to this particular value. Where is this value? This value is right here. So if you just take a look at the combined header, this list has the first value as whatever value was there in that second row. And I'm just going to go ahead and say that, hey, why don't you just go ahead in this particular combined header query? So go to this combined header query and just get me the first item of that. And that is actually going to automate this. And this also needs to be a list. And therefore, I can just provide that into a list format. And this is just going to be fine. Now, this works beautifully. Now, if you think about it for a quick second, if you just go back to the source, if there was something else right here, this will automatically be taken care by Power Query itself. Now, the only thing at the moment that we have to do is just break apart this column. So I can just right click right here and I can say, hey, I would want to uh, split this column by a delimiter. The delimiter happens to be a pipe symbol. That is good. And at each occurrence, this is good. Click on OK and they are split into two different columns. There's a change type step added, which I don't want it at the moment. This is good to go. Now, at the moment, these two columns are called attribute and attribute two. If you're sure about the headers, I can just go ahead and rename these two headers as well. The first column is going to be, let's say the company column. So I can just call this as company. Yes, they are manual, but you can also find ways to automate that as well. And the second one is going to be my department. And that is my company and that is my department. And that's the value. Now, obviously you can apply the data types save and close, load the data in Excel, and you are good to go. Oh my God, if you're still sticking around, you have to have insane love for Power Query. Now, take a look at the problem that I am. Let's just raise the notch of complexity a bit higher and start to solve this problem. So here's the data that I'm working with. It looks very, very simple. So we have a merged header up on the top. It's again a double headers data. So we have uh, England and we have India. And on below that, we have same consistent headers at the bottom. So we have date sales rep and the value and we have date sales rep and the value. Now I'm assuming that there are only going to be two headers, main header and the subheader, and every single main header is going to have three subheaders. That's what my assumption is in this particular scenario. If that were not true, we can still do something about it. But for now, we will just take that as an assumption. Now, what I would want to do with this data is not technically unpivot the data, but I want to stack the data. So these columns are going to remain the same. 
just as fine. But I would want to take the columns for all of the India data and put them below right here. And then I also want to add the fourth column in the data, which is going to be somewhere here, which is going to be the country column. And you can take a look at the output right here. So date sales rep and value doesn't change. They have the same headers and the values just get stacked one below the other. But we also have a country column uh, that has India and England as two values. How do we do this is something that we will take a look. Let's fire up Power Query for the last time. Before I start to talk about the solution, I want to talk about the thinking pattern that I have and what makes this problem tricky and how are we going to solve it? So at the moment, if you take a look, we have two main headers. We have the England header right here and then we have the India header right here on the right hand side. If there would have been just two headers, not any more headers, then it would have been relatively easier to just take this data and stack it below this particular data. But we don't know as of now that how many main headers could there be. As of now, we have England, then we have India, there could be America, there could be China and many other countries like that. So that is one element that makes the problem a tad bit tricky. The second problem that we have is that we would want to take the first column, which is this particular column, and we would want to place that column as a new column along with date sales rep and the value. That is the second tricky part that we have to solve. So now let's just go ahead and start to build the solution and let's just take a look at how do we write the M functions. All right, let's just start to first extract the first row of the data, which is nothing but the main headers. Let's just extract them and start to work with them. So I'm going to maybe create a new step. I'm going to call this particular step as record, first record as a list and start to write some M code right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reference the previous table source table right here and I'm going to reference the zeroth row which is the first row of data and I will get these values right here. So England and India but at the moment since I have pulled out the first row of the data a row of the data is nothing but a record and in the next step right here what I have received is nothing but uh, the record right here. Now I don't really want to work with the record because record also has these column headers and I don't really want to have that. What I would instead want is just a list. So I can just go ahead and convert that record into a list. So record .to list is going to do the job well. Start the bracket, close the bracket and press enter. This is going to give me a list. Now once I have the list I don't really want to have any kind of nulls right here. I don't really want to fill them down. I just want to use India and England so I'm just going to get rid of the nulls right here and I can just go ahead and start to wrap this function around the list dot remove nulls function so remove nulls uh, I can just go ahead and close the bracket at the end and this is going to take care of all the nulls and the nulls are gone and all that I have are the two values which is England and India. Now I'm going to do pretty much the same thing with the second row of the data or which is nothing but the subheaders. I'm just going to do the very thing once again. So I can just copy this very formula that at the moment extracts the zeroth or the first row of the data. I can just copy that, make a new step and in this step I can just paste that very formula referring to the source but then I will only change the the value from 0 to 1 so that it goes to the second row and extracts that. Now if I just maybe go ahead and remove that equals to sign that was created I have uh, this value uh, date sales at value date sales at value. Now the one thing that I would want to do is I don't really want to have duplicates because the table can just have one headers it cannot have duplicate headers so rather than using the list dot remove nulls function I can use the list dot distinct function and to remove any kind of duplicates there are and this is going to take care of the duplicates and we just have that now what we could do is we're going to go ahead and go back to the source step and we will start working with the data uh, leaving the two rows aside so I can just maybe work with this data and I can skip the first two rows of that so I can just come, come back to this particular step create a new step and I'm going to say hey I want to work with the table which is there in the uh, source step so I can say table.skip and the feeder for that is going to be the source table and I want to skip first two rows of that press enter and this is going to skip the first two rows of the data and of course I can just rename this as skip two rows from source now this is where things get interesting now what I want to do is I would want to have pairs of three but in columns so what do I mean by that this is the first set of three columns and then the next set of three columns and then the next set of three columns and so on and so forth. So I want to have this three columnar table, then I want to stack this three columnar table, then I want to stack the next three columnar table, so on and so forth. But how do I move from the left to the right? There is no formula that can do that. So what I need to do is I need to break the table into lists and convert the lists back into a table and then start to work with that. You'll understand. So technically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to 
convert this column into a list, this column into a list, this column into a list, so on and so forth, one by one. So let's just take a look. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new step. And in the new step, I'm going to say table dot two columns. And this is going to allow me to break the table into multiple lists, one column as one list. So if you take a look, we have got these six columns. Now what I can do is I can pair these lists into buckets of three. So the first three are the three columns of the first table and the next three are the three columns of the next table. And if there were more, you will actually pack them into buckets of three, so on and so forth. How do we do that? There is a function called list, what's that function? List.split. So I'm gonna go ahead and start to write the function. So list.split and list.split is going to ask me, hey, what's your split page number? So I, my page number is actually three. You can change that if you would want, but for now it's three. And you're gonna see that the first three lists, lists get packed together as a single list. And then the next three lists are going to get packed together as one single list. So now we're going to have just two lists. The first list has got three lists and the second list has got three lists. These are the three columns of the data. Now that we have the list, what we can do is we can take these lists and convert them into a table of three columns. So what we're going to do is we're going to maybe go ahead and start to write a list transformation function. So I'm going to say something like list.trans form and I will go ahead and go inside every single row of the list and I'll say hey why don't you pick up this particular list and all the columns there are in the list why don't you convert the three lists into columns and the formula to do that is nothing but uh, each underscore that is going to pick up the list and I can say table dot from columns is the formula that can pick up the list and convert it back into a table now if I just go, go ahead and close the bracket and press enter um, table dot from columns, I forgot that, press enter, list dot transform, there was a selling spelling mistake. And now what I've been able to get is nothing but two tables. This is my first table, this is my second table. The only problem with the tables as of now is that we do not have the headers and we need to have the headers. Do we have the headers? Sure enough, we have the headers. Where are the headers? The headers are right here. This is my date, sales rep and the value. Deal sales rep and the value are going to be placed as headers in the first table as well as the second table. So I can just go ahead and say, hey, when you're putting the lists together, I also would want to give you the headers and the headers are nothing but a set second record. Uh, I can just copy that. Instead of typing the whole thing, I can just put that right here. And this is still going to give me a table, but the difference this time is that if you peek into the table, you're going to see that you have these nice headers right here. Now, if you were not to create a new column for the country, this was a done affair. You could just combine the two tables together, the first table below the second table, and you are good to go. Now, what we would want is, Against the first table, I would want to have a column here for let's say England and against the second table, I would want to have a column here for India. To be able to solve this problem, what we're going to do is take a slight help from the user interface and that is going to help us write the code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this list back into a table. So I can just go ahead in the transform tab and I can convert this into a table. And uh, yeah, these options are fine. Click on OK and this converts back into a table. Now, once this has been converted into a table, we can go ahead and add a column here, which is going to be our index column, like accounting. This is going to be the zeroth row. This is going to be the first row. Now, you're going to ask me a question. Why? Why are you adding these columns, the zeroth and the first? Now, what we could do is with the zeroth, we're going to go ahead and fetch the zeroth position of this particular list. So if you take a look at this particular list, this list had just two items. The first item was England and the second item was India. And if I just go ahead in this list right here, and if I pick up the zeroth item, this is gonna pick up England. If I pick up the first item, this is gonna pick up India, and we would have added these two columns. That's about it. So now, let's just go ahead and cl click on the Add Columns tab, Index Column from zero, and this is gonna add these two columns. And now we can just go ahead and write a simple transformation function. So I can just go ahead and start to write a table.transform columns function. So I can say table.transform. The table that I'm trying to work with is this two column table. The column that I'm trying to transform is this column. And rather than actually calling it an index column, let's just call this as a country column. So I'm just not gonna call this as an index. I'm gonna call this as a country. And I will also change that in the step right here. So uh, table.transform columns, the two column table. And the column that I was trying to work with was the country column. So I can just say country. And for the moment, I will just write the each and the underscore to get the very value that is displayed at the moment. Transform columns, press enter. And now what you've seen is I get the very value. But I don't want to get the value value. I want to get the zeroth value of this particular list. So what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and write the list reference, which is nothing but first record 
I can just copy that. I can just paste that right here. And I can say, hey, here is my list reference. And please fetch uh, the first value, which is England, and the second value, which is India. And this is kind of good to go. Now that we have this table, we can just go ahead and expand this table happily. And this is going to be good to go. So I can just click on date sales at value, click on OK. And of course, this value is at the moment hard coded, which I don't really want it. I can just delete all of that and again reference my second record uh, as header list. I can just copy that, uh, control C. And I can just come right here and I can paste that value, close the bracket, press enter. Uh, this works beautifully. So now we have date, sales rep value and whatever country that we have it right here. It was a long one.